Traditions can be wonderful things. Traditions help us relive special moments from the past, bringing with them a joy and meaningful memories for those that share them. In a world that loves new and improved, there is a certain sense of comfort that comes with hanging on to certain memories. While some of us are experiencing the Vancouver Singing Christmas Tree for the very first time, it has, for literally thousands of people, become such a tradition. In early 1964, a lady in our church named Velma Chapman received a set of plans from her sister in Alabama of a wooden shaped structure that could support a singing choir. With those plans, our very first singing Christmas tree took shape. Stapled to the plywood walls of that tree were hundreds of evergreen boughs, including the spiders that would crawl down the necks of some of the choir members as they sang. This remarkable structure held 49 choir members spread over five rows in its inaugural year. In 1974, when our church moved into its third building, there was obvious need to redesign and rebuild our singing Christmas tree. So in response to this need, we constructed something like a large wooden puzzle of over 4,000 pieces that all fit together, but could contain 60 choir members over six rows and contained over 3,000 lights. In the mid 80s, we expanded this wooden structure even further by adding a seventh row so that we could now contain 74 choir members. This structure served as well for many years until 1993 when we moved into our current Broadway Church Auditorium. When we did, it was obvious to everyone that we needed to redesign and build a brand new singing Christmas tree structure to fill this vast auditorium space. And so, a 30-foot steel frame structure was found in Texas, of all places, that contained 10 rows that allowed us to hold over 100 choir members. This fourth and current version of our singing Christmas tree has served us well since 1993 and contains well over 4,000 lights. The presentation has changed and evolved over the years to stay current and relevant to our times. 50th anniversaries are rare and special occasions, and we are extremely thankful to God for his enduring faithfulness to help us carry us over all these years. And we are also tremendously grateful to the literally thousands of people who have committed themselves to helping us all these years. Perhaps you've been part of our choir in the past, or perhaps you were an usher, or maybe you played in our orchestra or acted on our stage, or maybe you manned one of our spotlights, maybe you served in the kitchen or helped direct cars in the parking lot. To everyone, from former directors to the very last custodian who stayed until the very end to shut off the lights, I want to extend my deepest and heartfelt gratitude to you for helping us get to our special 50th anniversary golden celebration. With this year's presentation, we celebrate some of our favorite songs and moments. Think of this as a sort of family reunion meets a greatest hits album. Whether you're about to experience these songs for the very first time, or whether you're going to enjoy reliving them all over again, we hope that you find these presentations to be both fun and inspiring and meaningful and memorable. I hope God allows us to continue the singing Christmas tree for another 50 more years, allowing us to share the hope of the Christmas story to thousands more guests in the Lower Mainland each and every year.
was it to go Christmas caroling on a night like this anyway? It was... <coughs> it was my idea. Didn't you check the weather app? Yes, yes, but I think you've forgotten something. Yeah, my wetsuit. Oh, you're forgetting that we're not out here doing this for our own comfort. We're doing this to bring a little Christmas comfort and joy to others, to spread peace and goodwill to those who need it the most. Couldn't we have just done a mass mail out instead? Or post something on our Facebook page to those who need it most? I'd be fine with just handing out Michael Bubbly CDs. <sighs> but that misses the very point of this. That would be too impersonal, too distant. That's the beauty of caroling. It's a musical expression of human interaction. But I'm singing in the rain. Caroling is a dying art. We can't let that happen. Oh, something's dying, that's for sure. But I think what's dying is my will to keep singing in this torrential downpour. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny, Miss Grinch. Anyway, I don't think anyone's home. They would have come to the door by now. Well, I guess we'll soon find out. <laughs> All right. 
Let's try another one, shall we? Mm -hmm. We wish you a Merry Christmas on three. Yeah, you better not hold your head back on those high notes. You could drown. <laughs> there we go. And a one, and a two. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now bring us a life preserver. Now bring us a life preserver. Now bring... Hey, those aren't the words. A little rewrite. You cannot rewrite a classic. Hey, hey, get off that phone. Didn't you hear what I said? This is our opportunity to connect with people. I am connecting with people? Yeah. Noah just texted me from the ark. He wanted to know if we needed a lift when the floodwaters rise. Come on, people. I need you to see the value in what this is all about. I mean, when else can we walk up to complete strangers' homes, sing out at the top of our lungs, without getting thrown in jail? Well, maybe that's why it's becoming a dying art. No! We're all too isolated. Neighbors don't know neighbors anymore. We all cocoon in our own separate little worlds, but caroling helps to break down those barriers. Yeah. Hey, you know what? What? When else, other than singing happy birthday, when else do people ever sing together anymore? And hey, hey, when was the last time you saw an actual choir, I mean with actual people, singing carols live? I mean, that just doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I still say nobody's home. They're probably still getting dressed. What do you want to sing next? Well, Silent Night is out. Now this is quite the storm, isn't it? I don't know. I think we should just pack it in and go home. Oh, come on. You're not wimping out, are you? All right, all right. Maybe we'll sing one more and then we'll go. How about it came upon a midnight clear? You sure that's a good choice? Oh, come on. I can't believe you're afraid of a few little sprinkles. Come on, let's do this. Uh. It came upon a midnight clear. That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth touched their hearts I, I can't take it anymore. That Michael Bublé CD, CD is looking pretty good right now. I'll race you to the van. Wait for me. Hey, 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 where are you going? Come on, it's just a little rain. I mean, at least we don't have to shovel it, right? It just seems wrong to cancel a Christmas performance because of the weather. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we should have relocated to the mall.
buzz And kids will blow dead the lion fuzz And I'll be doing whatever snow does in summer With a drink in my hand My snow up against the burning sand Probably getting gorgeously tanned in summer I'll finally see a summer breeze blow away a winter storm And find out what happens to solid water when it gets warm I can't wait to see what my buddies all think of me Just imagine how much cooler I'll be in summer Baba, babu, ba 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 boo the hot and the cold are both so intense Put them together, it just makes sense ra ta da ta ta da 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 do Winter's a good time to stay in and cuddle But put me in summer and I'll be A happy snowman When life gets rough, I like to hold on to my dreams Of relaxing in the summer sun Just let it off steam The sky will be blue, and you guys will be there too. When I finally do what frozen things do in summer. Happy 50th singing Christmas tree, everyone. Do 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 
shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, he... Oh, hello, may I help you? Is this the customer complaint department? Yes, it is. Good, I'd like to file a complaint. Very well. Tell me, ma'am, which product did not meet with your satisfaction? Oh, I'm not here to complain about a product. I'm here to complain about a customer. A uh, customer? This what? is the customer complaint department, isn't it? Yes, it is, but we don't. Well, I'd like to file a customer complaint about her. <laughs> and I'm counterfiling. Look, lady, you're the one who caused a scene. A scene? Yeah. Well, what would you call it when someone throws herself on the sales rack and screams, this is a crime scene because these prices are a steal. It's Christmas Eve. These are desperate times. Well, but you obviously both found something you liked. You found a nice blouse and you found a nice skirt. So what's the problem? This, this used to be a dress. dress. Ah! Yeah, until she wouldn't let go of it. I let go of it when the police came. The, the police? <laughs> Personally, I don't know why they were called. Security was doing just fine. Ah, hang on, hang on. Perhaps you should start at the beginning. Well, all right. You see, I was over in housewares, minding my own Christmas shopping business, when all of a sudden the announcer on the PA says, all the dresses and ladies wear are 80% on sale. Well, naturally, I started hyperventilating right there by the pressure cookers. <laughs> oh. When I composed myself, I walked calmly over to ladies' wear. She slid down the escalator. <laughs> I calmly slid down the escalator, <laughs> then proceeded to ladies' wear. She trampled 24 shoppers <laughs> along the way. Mm. I said, excuse me. Not to the one lady you knocked unconscious. Oh. She was a mannequin. Man. Yeah, now. Oh. <laughs> Look, ladies, it's Christmas Eve. It's a time to show love, peace, and... Last-minute bargains. <laughs> it's a time to show, to, to, to give. Well, why doesn't she give me back the bottom half of my dress? It's a time to show goodwill towards men. The men were fine. They got out of my way. She was the problem. Well, why don't we show the spirit of the holidays and just forget this entire little incident ever happened? But I want the bottom half of my dress. For the sake of Christmas. <laughs> but what about the police report? Uh, I'll take care of that. And security? Oh, they're used to Christmas sales. So what do you say? Truce. <sighs> Truce. Truce. Attention shoppers, there's a sale on shirts and slacks going on right now in our men's department. I repeat, there is a sale in progress no. now in our men's department. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Boy, people go a little crazy at Christmas. But you know what they say? If you can't beat them, you're obviously not running fast enough. I have dibs on the socks!
I never know how to follow that. Would you please one more time say thank you to Danny Fuentes for doing a wonderful job, our wonderful choir, and our wonderful orchestra. Are you enjoying the show so far, folks? Well, again, we want to say thank you for being our guests at this very special anniversary celebration of 50 years of the Vancouver Singing Christmas Tree. What a thrill to be able to share this moment with you folks, and thank you for being here. In just a moment, we're going to receive that offering that I was talking about earlier, and I'm asking that you would just even begin to start preparing yourself to give right now, and this, the sign is on the screen here beside me. Again, just to be very clear, this is a free show. You're under no obligation to give. Thanks for coming, and this is trying to be as low pressure as we possibly can. But if you are able to give, thank you for giving as generously as you can, and there's three ways to give. You can make out a check to Broadway Church. You can fill out a credit card slip. Uh, you can also text to give. All we ask is that you print clearly your name and your address, and every gift of $20 or more, we're happy to give you a track receipt. Okay? As you're preparing that right now, let me just do quick announcements really quick. One. If you have no plans for Christmas Eve, we would love to have you join us. Imagine if you can, next Sunday night when we are finished our 10th performance, that evening we begin taking all of this down, we put it away for another year, but we set up an entirely new stage, an entirely new set for the most classy, beautiful Christmas Eve service you can imagine. It is beautiful. And the great thing about this, this isn't just something for Broadway Church. This is something that we do for the entire community. We have guests from all over that come and join us for our Christmas Eve service, and we'd love for you to be a part of that as well. So we have two services, one at 5 o'clock and one at 7 o'clock. It's a one-hour service. It's great for the whole family. It's not just geared for adults. You can bring your children along, and it's going to be a wonderful time. We want to share that with you. That's Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And then second of all, last year we promoted an event with Dr. Dave Curry, and the response from you folks, the community, was so strong that we've decided to bring him back again for another year uh, to do a seven-week seminar. You can see it begins on January the 17th, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, the early bird price is $25 per person, and this is a marriage seminar. This is not a parenting seminar. It's a marriage seminar. So if you're here and you're saying, you know what, we are newlyweds, and we want to make sure we're well prepared for the future ahead of us, you can join us. If you've been here for 50 years, you've been married as long as the singing Christmas tree has been going on, we would love to have it. This is for a tune-up for any marriage, and the website is information you can get on how to be a part of something like this. That's it. Those are my announcements. Ushers, if you would make your way to the front at this time, thank you in advance for the gifts that you're about to donate to the Singing Christmas Tree. We hope you enjoy the second half. We're going to try something fun right now. We have a very, uh, how do I say this, unusual version of uh, Deck the Halls that we want to share with you. We hope you enjoy it. Orchestra, can we tune out one more time, please, before I make my way back to the podium? Follow 
let's take this back home to the south. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. La 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 la. So happy day, happy glad day, some wonderful morning. Stands on its way, the show to shine, the pretty bells shine. I'm looking to see what waits for me by and by. Dawn, we now are matching outfits. Fa la 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 la. Show the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. La 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 la. Disco ball before us. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Ain't no job talking. It's not a side chorus. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Christmas is here, we're gonna celebrate Just like we did back to 78 Put your bell bottoms on, come on way down That holiday fever is all Darling, now our platform shoes. La 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 la. 
Child, when I'm still a child. 
This is the true story of the actual events surrounding Jesus' birth. Three very distinct stories of his humble departure from heaven's throne to his arrival in a lowly manger. The story of Mary and Joseph is like none other. The Bible tells us that God sent an angel to initiate this great event. Mary was thoroughly shaken by his sudden appearance, but the angel said, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God's Holy Spirit has made you pregnant. You will give birth to a son, and when you do, you will name him Jesus. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never been with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the child you give birth to will be called the Son of God. Can you imagine her emotions in the midst of this conversation? The complete shock, the absolute confusion. That's a lot for a person to take in, right out of the blue. Her fiance, Joseph, was also completely caught off guard when Mary relayed this announcement to him. How did he feel? This is what the Bible tells us. Joseph, being an honorable man, he initially determined to take care of things quietly so Mary wouldn't be disgraced. While he was trying to figure out what to do, Joseph had a dream in which the angel appeared to him saying, Joseph, don't cancel the wedding. God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and when she does, you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Hmm. One angel, one couple, one incredible message from God. But the story, as amazing as it is, doesn't stop there. This same news was shared with some of the least likely people that anyone would have ever imagined. They weren't reporters or politicians. They weren't people of influence or means. Here's what the Bible says. Caesar Augustus ordered that a census be taken throughout the Roman Empire. So Joseph went to Bethlehem with Mary, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. There were some shepherds on night watch over their sheep in the field, and suddenly an angel appeared to them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid, I'm here to bring you good news that's for all mankind. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir, singing glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. As the angels finished singing, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get to Bethlehem and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running, and there they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. First, it was a visit from an angel to Mary. Then a second visit from the same angel to Joseph. Then a third visit from not one angel, but an entire choir of angels singing at the top of their lungs. To a bunch of lowly shepherds on a quiet remote hillside on a dark and quiet night. Hmm. Incredibly, the story surrounding Jesus' birth still doesn't end there. The final account tells of a journey taken by wise men from the east. The wise men asked, where can we find this newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the heavens that signaled his birth, and we are on a pilgrimage to worship him. The wise men followed that star until it settled over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. When the wise men entered the home where Mary was holding the child, overwhelmed, they fell on their knees and began to worship the newborn king. They presented their gifts of gold, myrrh, and frankincense. And these are the events surrounding the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. Each one serving a role in paving the way to the greatest story ever told. The story that gives eternal hope to each and every one of us. The story of the Son of God leaving heaven's throne to come to earth. That we may know him, that we may know his love, his joy, and his peace. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. everyone.
satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul with your love you satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul with your love you make my heart sing you lift me on equal wings just when i thought that my heart it would fail you'd take the darkest night and you turn it to For you satisfy my soul, you satisfy my soul, you satisfy my soul with your love. Hallelujah, you make all things beautiful. Trials and testing prove there's gold And hallelujah You turn morning into joy And hallelujah You make all things beautiful Hallelujah Trials and testing prove with your love. Are you management material? By that I mean, do you have what it takes to be a leader of men and women? A consulting company 
put a quick questionnaire together where they put four questions, pulled them together to discern the management level thinkers. I'm going to quickly give you the test, see if you're management level. Here's the first question. How do you put a giraffe in a refrigerator? Carefully. The answer is open the door, put the giraffe in and close the door. That tests whether or not you make the simple complex. Okay, see how you do in the second question. How do you put an elephant in a refrigerator? Yeah, and I hear some of you. No, the wrong answer is open the door, put the elephant in, and close the door. That's the wrong answer. The correct answer is open the door, take out the giraffe, <laughs> put in the elephant, and close the door. That tests whether or not you recognize the consequences of your previous actions. <laughs> Stick with me. Here's the third question. The king of the jungle hosts an animal conference and he invites every animal in the world to attend. And every animal in the world actually does attend except for one. Which animal does not attend? The That's right, the elephant. He's locked in the refrigerator. <laughs> that tests your memory. One last question. Fear not, you still got a chance to be a management level. Here we go. You are out in the middle of the jungle. You come across a river that is famous for being filled with crocodiles that eat every man and woman that jumps in the river. How do you cross the river? You just swim because all the crocodiles are at the animal conference. <laughs> that tests whether or not you learn from your past mistakes. Now, the consulting firm claims that 90% of professionals that they ask get most of these questions wrong. Yet, most preschoolers get them right. <laughs> Which, they say, shows that we can miss the truth even though it's right in front of us. In fact, nowhere is that principle more true, where we miss the truth even though it's right in front of us, than when it comes to the story of God. With my remaining three minutes, I want to use these two chairs, and I want to present to you two competing stories when it comes to the story of God. One of them is wrong, and one of them is the biblical story. See if you can tell the difference between the two. See if you can tell which is the biblical story and which is the wrong one. Here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created mankind as his premier, his pinnacle creation. And mankind was created to have a loving face-to-face -face relationship with God. But since love requires a choice, mankind used our ability to choose to turn our backs on God. That's called sin. Now God, being a pure holy God and sinless, turned his back on sinful humanity. Now, humanity, we soon realized, ooh, that probably wasn't a smart decision. We are now separated from God. And so we did our best to turn back to God, but we couldn't go all the way because we still now have sin in our lives. And so we live our lives separated from God, trying to get back to God, but separated, and hoping that maybe somehow we can be good enough and do things well enough that God will turn his back and face us once again. And so we live our lives not quite sure Sure, and we die only hoping beyond hope that maybe in the next realm God will face us and love us once again. That's the first version, but that's not the biblical version. Let me show you the biblical version of the story of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and mankind was God's premier pinnacle creation. And we were created in his image, meaning we were created with the ability to have a loving relationship with him, to face-to-face -to -face relationship with him. But since love requires the ability to choose, we chose to reject God, to turn our back on God. That's called sin. And since God is a pure, loving, but holy, sinless God, God responded by pursuing us and saying, I love you, please return back to me. And humanity said, no, we want to live our own lives. And God said, but you're killing one another. So I'll give you laws to protect you from each other and to lead you back to me. And we said, no, 
we don't want your laws. We want to live our way. So God says, I will continue to pursue you. I'll send you prophets, and they will teach you of my ways to draw you back to me. And we said, we don't want your prophets. We'll kill your prophets. And God said, then I'll send you teachers to draw you back to me. I'm pursuing you. I love you. I want to show you the way. We said, we don't want your teachers. We don't want to listen to you. So God said, all right. I'm no longer going to send people to you. I myself will come in the form of a human, Jesus of Nazareth, and I'll live as a human being amongst you, a perfect, sinless life. And then I will actually give myself as a sacrifice. I will die on the cross to pay your penalty, to pay the price of your sin and rebellion. And I will then rise from the dead and offer anyone who wants the gift of forgiveness and new life. And as I, you accept my gift of forgiveness in new life, I will then give you the ability to face me once again so that we can again live in face-to-face relationship. And not only that, not only will I live with you, but I will actually live within you, having an intimate spirit-to-spirit relationship forever. That is what the Bible teaches regarding the story of God. Now, here's the question of the day. Is that your experience? Is that what you're living? Do you know what it is to have a face-to-face, spirit-to-spirit, intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ? If you don't, you say, Darren, how do I experience this? You just accept it. It's a gift Jesus purchased for you. Well, how do I experience this gift? How do I receive this gift of new life and, and forgiveness? You just accept it. How do I do that? Pray with me right now. I'm simply going to pray, and you agree with me as I pray. In fact, I'm asking everyone right now in my last moment to bow our heads together, even if it's just out of respect for the people around you. Let's bow our heads together and just agree with me as I pray on your behalf. God, I acknowledge that I have turned my back on you. It's what the Bible calls sin. I have rejected you and your ways but you have pursued me. You didn't reject me. You never turned your back on me. You have chased after me since the moment I was in my mother's womb. And you brought me here to this place today so that I could hear this truth and respond to your reality. So I acknowledge my rejection of you. I don't want to live that way anymore. I accept your gift of forgiveness in new life. Come and live within me. Change me from the inside out. Fill me with your spirit. And show me the next step that I need to take as I follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Life is busy. Every day we ask questions like, what's happening today? What should I wear? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are bigger questions like, why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? These are some of life's big questions, but there's rarely enough time to think them through. That's why Alpha exists. Alpha is a place to explore life's big questions in a safe and open environment. It's a series of sessions where anyone can share their thoughts and opinions and ask questions without feeling judged. When you come to an Alpha, you'll notice that first, there's food. Whether it's a full meal or a light snack, this is the time to get to know each other in a casual setting. Next, you'll watch an Alpha talk. The talks are created to engage and spark conversation. They explore big issues around faith from a Christian perspective. After the talk is a time for discussion, This is the most essential part of any Alpha. It allows everyone to share their own opinions on the ideas presented in the talks. It's a time for people with different thoughts, beliefs, and experiences to ask honest questions and have open conversation. Every week, there are guests coming for the first time to an Alpha in their community. Alpha is for everyone, regardless of background or beliefs. There's no pressure, no follow-up, and it's completely free to attend. Come and explore life's big questions.
I'm all set. Now I just got to wait for the first lucky young lady to come by and be rewarded for her good fortune and excellent timing. <laughs> no pushing or shoving. No budding in line. There's plenty of kissies to go around for everyone. <laughs> I think, did you hear that? I think I hear the crowds all rushing in now. No, the crowds are rushing in now. 
Maybe they're stuck in traffic or, or something. And, oh, Charlene, hello. <laughs> Notice anything special about my outfit tonight? You're kidding, right? <laughs> oh, Charlene, Charlene, come on. It's Christmas. You know, eggnog, sugar cookies, mistletoe. This is your idea of picking up a date for our office Christmas party tonight? Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. It's Christmas. Christmas is known for its traditions. Name me one Christmas tradition that is as strong a romantic gesture as the humble yet ever so elegant mistletoe. Hmm. How about shoveling my driveway the next time it snows? Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you telling me? that you're not impressed by a guy at all who's just putting himself out there like this? Impressed? Perhaps a little. Attracted? Sorry, pal. Whoa, 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 okay, hang on. First of all, it's Paul, not pal, okay? We, we sit side by side all year long. Our desks are literally touching. And second of all, you're telling me that this does nothing for you? You want to know what would do it for me? <clears throat> uh, you stepping aside so you, I can get to my table. No, but... Best of luck to you, Paul. Merry Christmas. Ouch. Shot down on my first attempt. No matter. Get knocked down once, get back up twice, I always say. This only helps to strengthen my resolve. Brenda! <laughs> Hello, Brenda. <laughs> Notice anything uh, different about me? Hmm? You got a haircut, didn't you? No, oh, Brenda, 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 Brenda. Stay a while. Let's catch up a bit. Let's have a little chit-chat. <laughs> Paul, the gimmick's cute, but you don't really expect anyone to fall for that, do you? Gimmick? Brenda! This is the most romantic plant in the world. This, combined with all the festive good cheer and festive good will that's in the air, this creates the perfect scenario for some lucky young lady to meet her Mr. Right. <laughs> and you believe that qualifies you to be someone's Mr. Right? <laughs> what, you have someone else better in mind? Oh, absolutely. I can picture him now. He's got a nice, dark tan. A perfectly chiseled physique. He's quiet, smells like gingerbread, and is three inches tall. Now that's the perfect man for me this Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> wow. Were my expectations a bit too high? No, of course not. It's mistletoe, for goodness sake. It's the tried, tested, true lure of the ladies. <laughs> Although she might have a point about this gingerbread, because I could really, yeah, I could use a little ginger in my life. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Like, ooh. Hey, Sandy, how's the party in there going? Hey, Paul, looks like almost everyone has arrived and dinner's going to start soon. Hey, I gotta see, I love that mistletoe hat. That's really cool. I see you've noticed my new headband. You like it? <laughs> Absolutely, how could I not? It's brilliant, the hanger, the glue on the headband. What a neat idea. And where did you get that from? Well, if you must know, my little sister made it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, she told me when I babysat her the other night. What? She even posted on her Instagram page. And she's been texting me all night long, wondering if it's working its magic. Any takers so far? Would you believe me if I said no? A hundred percent. What? Are you even suggesting that the mighty mistletoe has lost its powers? Paul, trust me, the mistletoe went out of style around the same time as the kissing booths and car hops at A&W. No girl's gonna fall in love with you because of mistletoe? I or know. Or poinsettias? I know. Or even a dozen red roses, for that matter. I know, and that's what I kept telling my little sister. But she insisted that twas the season to at least twy. <laughs> Plants are not the way to a girl's heart at Christmas. It's you, Paul. It's your sense of charm. Your neat ideas. 
That's a better way to catch a girl's eye than this. I guess you're right. I, I just didn't want to sit all by myself again this year at the Christmas party. Of course not. Frankly, apart from the fact that this is a borderline HR concern, <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Why don't you come and sit with me tonight? I'm flying solo too. Hey, is that your car being towed? What? <laughs> Made you look. <laughs> <laughs> what was that for? Well, hanging out with me tonight probably isn't what you expected. But we need to give your little sister something to talk about, don't you think? Okay. Say cheese. One, two, three, cheese!
Thank you. Let's have a big thank you for our sound and lighting people way up in the balcony and in the back room. And a thank you to our orchestra, 50 years of excellence. Thank you for some fine musicianship. To our dancers, our singers, our actors, our acrobats, let's thank them for a great job. And for the 100 folks who've been standing in that tree for a couple hours, let's thank them. And to the man who wrote the script and uh, directed this entire presentation, Phil Spolster. Phil, thank you very much. Now, before we conclude with a long-held tradition, let me quickly remind you. If you want to know how to take the next step in your journey, maybe you prayed that prayer with me tonight. We have an Alpha course here at Broadway Church and where you can take that next step and learn and ask some important questions. In a moment, you'll see on the side screens the address of our website where you can register. On December 20th, we have a free meal where you can just try it once, test drive it, see if Alpha is something that interests you. So reserve your free spot for a free meal coming up on December 20th. And also, if you don't own a copy of the New Testament, out in the lobby, you'll see some tables. Take one. They're for free. We have several languages. See if we have your language. Again, it's our gift to you. Now, one final song we'd like to sing for you.
again. Thank you very much for coming, folks. Thank you so much for coming. Be kind to each other out in the parking lot. God bless you. Thanks for coming this year. Hey! We got the Sandy track, yo! We got Rick and Houston and Khadiz will have fun up in here on stage. Feel free to join us if you want. We just want to pick this up a little bit. Here we go! Do you remember? Yeah.